I like to think I do decently under pressure, though I would understand if you disagree. But I'll admit I had no idea where to start when the storyteller threw me into this game against the composer. Both of them had far more power and experience. For all my travels till this point, I was still a glorified scientist. I only had two powers, as the storyteller called them. They were useful, but not exactly all-powerful. You aren't as badly off as you think, the storyteller said, apparently sensing my panic. In fact, I think you're favoured to win the game at this point. What advantages do I have exactly? I replied a bit harsher than I intended. Your aura? The bio-enhancement field you're generating? The other man replied. The composer had nothing like that. He had some of those energy threads boosting his strength and durability, but it was still weaker than you are. When he reached for me, he was too fast to see, I pointed out. Seems like he's faster than me. That was a trick, he dismissed with the wave of a hand and using powers he isn't allowed to now. Are you enjoying this? I demanded, glaring at him. Very much so, the storyteller agreed. I always enjoy watching two people smarter than me clash. At least one of us is enjoying this, I grumbled. Don't suppose you can give me any help? Hmm, I suppose the rules don't prohibit some advice, he pondered, tapping his chin. I'll give you one more hint, and that is to look into the waveform of the null field. Waveforms are a confusing subject when it comes to quantum physics, as they apply to everything and nothing at the same time. Most particles don't move like particles. They move like waves up until the instant they come into contact with another particle. Of course, since both are waves, it's down to pure probability that the particles will interact at any given moment. There really isn't an intuitive way to describe it. The best I can do is to describe it like throwing a ball at a wall. The instant the ball leaves your hand, it turns into a sound wave that spreads out in the direction you threw it. The sound wave contacts the wall, and at some point it'll suddenly turn back into a ball and bounce off the wall. We can make predictions as to where the ball is likely to hit the wall, but until it actually strikes it, we have no idea where it is. And that's ignoring uncertainty, tunneling, interference patterns, and a whole bunch of other things. All you really need to know is that a waveform in quantum physics describes where a particle might show up, not a field. By telling me to look at the waveform of this null field, he was in effect telling me it wasn't a field at all, but particles in a field. Perhaps he was telling me there was a way for me to harness these particles to help myself? I needed more information, and the only place I could think of to get it was from the head administrator. The storyteller followed closely behind me as I rushed towards where I figured the head's office was. I figured I had some time before the composer would come after me. Based on what I knew of the other man, he would first go to recruit his own people, then unleash the harmony if they refused. There wasn't much I could do about that. In fact, to minimize the damage to the people of this world, it would be in my interest to get away from them as soon as I could. I rushed past his secretary, not giving her a chance to complain, before barging into the administrator's office. I need your help, I told him as he looked up. Oh, what now? the large man groaned. I swear most lost ones aren't as difficult as you, storyteller. I'm just here to watch, my fellow traveller said, lifting his hands innocently. I need information on the null field, I told him. I told you we don't need you to... He started, only for me to interrupt. No, I need it for me. The Farian traveller, lost one, is after me, I explained quickly. He wants to, well, basically kill me. You're here for barely an hour, and someone is already after your head? Hephus groaned, faster than I would have thought such a large man could move. He pulled a large pistol out from under his desk, pointed it at me, and pulled the trigger. The gun barked twice as he fired at me once, then shifted it to point at the storyteller. I'll admit I flinched from the loud report, but I needn't have worried. 
my aura-empowered barrier flexing as it absorbed the bullet's impact. But in the end, the round clattered to the floor, slightly crushed from the barrier. I glanced over to see how the storyteller was doing, only to see him gag, almost comically, for a moment before spitting an intact bullet into his palm. Damn it! You lost ones don't even die properly, he grumbled, putting his pistol away as the secretary came rushing into the room. Look, I plan on taking the battle as far from here as I can, I explained, trying to control my racing heart. But I need information on the null field first. Fine, Heffer snapped after a moment, glancing past me to his secretary. But once you get it, you leave my dome and don't come back. Both of you. I'll find a way to make it work, I nodded. If I could figure out how to harness the null field, then I should be able to make myself immune to it. The null entities might be more difficult, but my barrier held against their attack in the past. It only took a minute for the secretary to print out a stack of documents and hand them to me. I quickly began reading through them as guards escorted the storyteller and me to the exit. To call it confusing would be an understatement. Uh, the storyteller had implied it was some kind of particle, but the data here was the opposite, that it was a passive field. Now it's not impossible for a quantum field to have both a non-zero baseline and point excitation particles, but it was rare. That being said, there was no evidence of active particles in this field. Near as I could tell, it was a unique field that slowly drained energy from the weak nuclear force. This would lead to proton decay over time, which would appear to be rapid erosion of anything exposed to it. There were ways to keep it at bay. Materials with high molecular strength that don't erode easily were one. Highly stable atoms were also resistant to its effects, such as nitrogen. That explained why the planet was still intact, even though it seemed like the stars had long since gone out. The atmosphere protecting the planet from the null field, just as it had from excess radiation. Of course, it was a losing battle. The only reason the planet hadn't frozen is because of energy lost as materials eroded. Each atom that fell apart, each proton that decayed, released a little bit of heat. Radiation wasn't safe either, as it seemed that light itself rapidly redshifted when passing through a null field. Not from a Doppler effect or anything, but from the photon itself losing energy which is why it was so dark out. Fascinating revelations, no doubt, but it all disagreed with what the storyteller had said. The null field was a passive field, not an active one. I was so caught up in my reading that I hadn't realized I was standing in the airlock leading out of the dome until I heard the door shut behind me. When you're ready to leave, just hit the exit button a voice said over the intercom. I don't see any evidence of null particles, I said to the storyteller. What? he asked. You said to look at the waveform of the null field, but I don't see any evidence of particle activity in the field. Um, what does that have to do with anything? You said waveform. Only particles have waveforms, I explained. But there are no null particles. Wait, what? He looked confused. No, I meant you should look into how the field operates. Particles? You said waveform, I insisted. I'm no quantum physics surgeon, the other man shrugged. I meant you should see how your own powers interact with it. Damn it, I cursed, sorting through the mess of papers I held. Of course, he had no idea what he was saying exactly. I figured he knew more than I did about everything. He'd seemed so authoritative, powerful, but that was clearly a mistake. Wait, I said, stiffening. Based on what the papers said, the null field should take effect almost instantly upon making contact with anything. But I'd be outside in it for nearly an hour with no ill effect. 
Materials that were highly stable or resistant to erosion were stronger against the effects of the field. My aura stopped me from aging entirely, boosting my health, strength and durability. I still didn't really understand how, but what if the two fields counteracted one another? That would explain how I was fine after going outside and could be what the storyteller was talking about. There was only one way to test the theory, unfortunately, and before I lost the nerve, I slapped the open button on the airlock. See, your enhancement field has an inverse waveform to the null field, the storyteller said as I watched myself for evidence of proton decay. You realize nothing you said has any real meaning, I pointed out. The two fields counteract each other. That's what I said, he nodded, and I sighed. Then, let's get moving, I said after a moment. You got a plan. The start of one, anyways, I admitted. It didn't take long for the composer to realize I'd left the dome. I imagine Heffer straight up told him that I'd left to try and minimize collateral damage. I couldn't blame the man either. He wanted to keep his people safe. I'd do the same thing in his position. Traveller! The composer shouted into the decaying city we now stood in. I watched him from a distance, easily able to see him thanks to the containment suit he wore. It seems the storyteller was correct that my opponent didn't have access to aura. This is pathetic even for you, the composer shouted. Keeping the people of that dome safe I at least understand, but to sacrifice yourself like this. Who said anything about sacrificing myself? I replied, using a spell to project my voice to another building. That was the right call as the composer lashed out with his own magic at the area my voice came from, tearing the structure apart. Good try, but you missed, I said through another spell. Is it really so important that my memories be erased? You wouldn't understand as you are, the composer replied, walking towards where my voice now came from. All you can see are the lives before you, not the bigger picture, as you people call it. This is why I'd hoped to get to you before you regained your ability to retain your memories. Then tell me, what is this bigger picture? I asked, my voice leading him further from the dome. What is so important that I must be indoctrinated to see it? You've already seen it. You just can't understand what you saw, the composer continued, pausing to sweep a building with his magic. You're smart, though, so let me point you in the correct direction. The entity you seem to call the Harmony, I got it by combining data from thousands, possibly millions, of void worlds. And, I prompted to keep him talking, you must be playing dumb. I didn't create the harmony, I recreated it. There are things living in the void, and the entity you call the harmony is a shadow of one. I'll admit that caught me off guard, but I was too busy to think about it. Cut. Moreover, I wasn't sure I believed him. Everything I knew about the many worlds was that voids were dead realities. Nothing could happen there. Nothing could live there. That's why they were called voids. And that justifies killing others? I asked through a new spell. I said you wouldn't understand, he sighed. Think about it. There are entities living in the void. Their thought processes are similar to our own. How do you think that is possible? It isn't, I said as another of my voice spells was torn up by the composer. This is why I need to reset you again, the composer said, turning to face where I actually was. It seems he finally tracked down my spells, but that was fine. Now, enough of this stupid game of hiding, he continued, closing on where I was. Or did you really think you could lose me out here? Without a suit? Come on, there's no need for you to die. Come with me and I promise to not harm any people in this world. Tempting, but I have another offer, I said, grabbing the last of the spells I'd prepared. Here, my people will give you the details. As I spoke, I activated the last spell. In an instant, 
the dozen other spells I'd spread around the area were snuffed out, and, at the same time, a dozen flares scattered on the ground near where the composer stood lit themselves. The Farian looked confused as the street was suddenly bathed in flickering red light. When I prepared this plan, I'd done more than just place distraction spells. I'd scattered heat spells further out. They were a rather simple application of the threads. All they did was rub against each other to generate heat. Enough heat that anything sensitive to it would sense it. At least, that was the hope. And as the flares lit, I was rewarded as I felt the warbling cry of a number of null entities. The heat sources they'd been attracted by, gone and replaced with several flares. And one confused-looking Farian. I watched as a half-dozen of the barely existing creatures closed in on the composer. If he knew what was best for him, he'd run. I'd figured that my aura, in addition to negating the null field, would render me nearly invisible to the null entities. Before, they'd been attracted to me by the flare, but without that, I hoped they'd ignore me in favour of the composer. And it seemed I was right as one slid past where the storyteller and I hid. Impressive, the storyteller nodded. I hadn't thought of using the nullities, figured you could just outrun him and run down the clock with your... you called it aura. That could have worked, I replied refusing to admit that I simply hadn't thought of that simple idea. Without Aura, the composer wouldn't have been able to keep up with my enhanced body, and while his suit protected him from the null field, it didn't counter it entirely, so I could have just run and been safe without this complex plan. Not that I was going to admit that to the storyteller. I figured that the composer would run for the dome after realizing he'd been lured into a trap, but I was again caught off guard as he turned to face the nearest null entity. Lifting a hand, he did... something. It wasn't the magic threads. If anything, the energy my senses picked up indicated it was more in line with the null field than anything else. Moreover, it caused the null creature to apparently fall apart and vanish. I watched in shock as, one by one, he eliminated the null entities. I'd hope to not have to use this, the composer said, sounding more sad than angry. My studies into the void have progressed far past that simple entity you encountered. In a panic, I rushed from my hiding spot, assembling a spell as I did so. I was told I could use two powers. Correct storyteller, the composer shouted. I didn't see this coming, but you're fine, he replied. Didn't realize you could wield the void itself as a weapon. Don't be a simpleton. I'm not wielding the void. The composer sighed. An idiot like you wouldn't understand. Reaching the bottom story of the building, I threw my blocking spell at the door where the composer would enter. Empowered with aura, I figured it would give him some trouble. I didn't expect his new power to dissolve the wall around it. Magic or no, without something to anchor to, it was useless. Are you done with this pathetic show, Traveller? The composer asked, stepping over the ruined remains of my spell. In a panic, I turned to flee, only for him to throw his own spell to block the large opening in a wall I'd intended to escape through. Now, if this farce of a game is over, he said, holding one hand up as if ready to use his power on me, be a good boy and let me destroy that implant. It was a loss for me, I realized, backing up against a wall as the composer continued to approach. I glanced around desperately for a way out, but there was nothing. I'd cornered myself in this building so I couldn't even enact the plan the storyteller had put forth. Speaking of the third traveler, he was standing off to one side, simply watching as the composer walked ever closer. Then... Just as I was about to give up, a timer appeared in the corner of my vision. I didn't bother to read it and simply mashed the jump early prompt. And like that, the world around me vanished.